Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. So excited to have you all here. AI Makerspace Community Build Session. I am. I have the pleasure to speak to you today with my good friend, Chris Alexiak, and we're going to be talking about LLM observability with Arises Phoenix, as well as Llama Index. So today, I want to tell you a story about somebody named Christos who went through the process of learning LLMs and how to use them and asking questions to chat GPT and other open AI style interfaces, asking them questions, getting some responses, and even building retrieval augmented generation on top of those PDFs and documents and having them work sometimes, but not knowing when they would fail, how long they would take, and just it was very confusing. And being able to dive in, and we're going to learn about this term visibility and see what's going on. How do I figure out? when my LLM application is failing and how good the responses are, how good the retrieved information is, and things like, is my LLM hallucinating? Is it making up things? Is it using the retrieved information to get a response or not? Other problems in the industry, as you can see here, are collecting quality data and being able to evaluate it and just finding that needle in the haystack. So what is working and what isn't? So these problems arise and it would be great if there was a way for us to dive into that process end to end, making a call, seeing everything that's going on underneath the hood, and at each step, asking ourselves, is it, is it working? Is this component retrieving a piece of information that I want that's relevant to the context of the question? Is the span, so another term that we're going to learn today, is it, is it um, using... Is, the, is, is each component working? So wouldn't it be nice if we had a tool to use such as Arises Phoenix? And the whole scope of large language model observability has these five stages. And today we're gonna be focusing on the first two, evaluation as well as traces and spans. And evaluation is critical to ensuring that things are working correctly and traces and spans gives us that visibility into each component that we were just talking about. The others are, are, as, are just as important, but are kind of in the latter stage before ideation and iteration and something that I believe is covered more broadly out there in, uh, the, in the ML LLM space. So firstly, Evaluation. What is evaluation? We want to take some question that we're answering and the, the relevant context that we're retrieving and ask ourselves, is what's going on here working for our use case? So the industry best practice in this case is to have the, a goal, a, a quotes, golden data set, which is a human, human generated feedback or uh, or human, yeah, human, human generated feedback. And this can be expensive. So in technology, this can be more expensive than running your inferences on GPUs and quite time consuming. And where LLM assisted evals comes in, we can apply it here and it's much more scalable. We see what's going on. We see how it's 
thinking using chain of thought, breaking each part into different steps that we then can look at and evaluate. And this is much faster and relatively less expensive. So we'll see how to do that in just a bit. And at each step, we can also get more metrics such as the latency of each of these components. So in a single question, who is the president of the United States? You, you know, before you get a response, you're gonna to wanna to look at each step in this component, the chain, the retriever, the LLM, and we'll take a look at what each of these things are, but having the metrics there and an easy to see user interface where we can get an idea of what's working well, what isn't, and then look at the ones that aren't, look, aren't working well. This is, this is quite insightful. So today we're gonna to focus on the evaluation and traces portion in our notebook. So I'm gonna jump into a notebook that I have prepared for you, for us, and provided by Arise Phoenix. And we're going to walk through each line, but before that, I wanna give a setup of what is being, what, what, the, what the idea of this notebook uh, what the use case is. So in this, in this notebook, we're going to be using the documentation that's provided by Phoenix. And we, what they've done is they've, they've indexed this information. So each, each component of their documentation of their website, let's say is, is chunked and indexed and we can now ask questions about it and get some responses. And the way that we do that is by first importing, installing necessary packages, importing them, and then with one line of code, we are going to install this one-click observability uh, monitor. So by opening that here, we can see this great stream of information of all the calls that we're gonna be making. And it's a really good viewpoint into what's going on. So we have this open AI key, and this is how we set up open AI. And with Llama index, what we can do is we can take the pre-persisted index that Arise has provided on their documentation in a vector database and use Llama Index's query engine to ask questions about the documentation by retrieving relevant information. And that's what's going on in this cell. And we are also going to take a few sample questions that, that have been provided as well. And we can, we can ask ourselves as we're, as we're reading through these, you know, what exactly would I, would I want to ask the documentation? Uh, what questions do I, I personally have? How can this help me? One of them being, you know, pretty straightforward question. How can this help me as an AI engineer? And we can actually jump in and, and see this step by step. So if we go into the trace, into the dashboard here and kind of look at the metrics, how long it took the tokens and jump into one of my favorite aspects of this tool and see actually what context was retrieved and actually look at the documentation and say, okay, look here, there's this score. So this semantic similarity score, which gives us a clear insight of what's going on when it's, when it's, when it's retrieving this information. It's, it's, it's retrieving the top two pieces of information or you know, top K, we can, we can play around with that. That's something that we'll get into 
uh, later with uh, search and retrieval, but it gives us a really good insight into maybe a piece of information that's missing. So in production, if your users are asking a question and you see that this these scores are consistently low in a certain um, type of question, then that gives you some insight into how it all works. So for each of these span kinds types, let's take a look. As we saw, there's there's the chain. So this is in Langchain and in Llama index, the kind of the glue that puts these pieces together, the retriever that gets the documentation. And for each one of these, we are able to get the in, get the metrics, get the information that they're calling and really see it. So instead of doing this ourselves and looking at each component and, and having to do that, um, this really gives us a lot of insight. So kind of jumping back, we can see how useful this really is. With the components, with the attributes, But the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna evaluate each one of these components one by one. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a look at a retrieval component and do an evaluation with an LLM on whether or not it's relevant. So a simple binary classification. And the way that this works is by using an evaluation template here provided, you can see that it's asking the LLM, is this information relevant or not? So by kind of guiding the LLM to answer it, answer our question in this way by only having relevant or irrelevant, we will get a very easy, easily implemented way of, of answering this question. at scale. So the way that this look the way that this looks like is if we look here at the table of our questions. So for example, this this question and the documents that it retrieved, we can get a good idea of what that looks like. And then in the next section with that template that you saw, we can for the top one or two or three documents that we retrieve ask the question is it relevant or not so by understanding what pieces of information that we retrieved are relevant we can get an idea of for example answering this question is 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 there is our documentation sufficient enough to to answer this question and if you're getting scores and such as this one, where you're kind of, you have, uh, you know, zeros across the board, then that might mean that you need to improve your documentation in that area. This might also come, this might also be a place to improve your, your prompt. So this is where prompt engineering comes in. But just having this as a resource is so, is so useful. So here we can see a relevant example about using UMAP and it gives us the context here. So this is a really powerful tool that we're gonna go ahead and play with. And what I want what I want you to all to to take away from this is that, By having an evaluation do this, this process, we save a whole lot of time and we get clear visibility of this whole process end to end. We know what works, what doesn't work. And instead of going into this process, wondering why your application doesn't work and why the questions you're asking work one day and not the next, 
you can have a response and you can play around and you have some metrics to look at, you know, before using these tools, you're kind of flying blind. And that's, that's what I want to, that's what I want you to leave with today. So I believe that we are going to have some breakout rooms where we walk through this, this notebook and you guys get a chance to work on it yourselves and ask any questions that you might have about what we talked about so far and how this might help you.